In this part of the training module, we will discuss the generation of irrigation schedules and deficit irrigation. The mode generation of irrigation schedules is used to design irrigation schedules, to check particular irrigation strategies. It consists in selecting a time criteria and a depth criterion. The time criteria determines when water has to be applied. The depth criteria, how much water to apply. Now, the criteria, they can vary in the crop cycle. Typically, a time criteria might vary in the different growth stages in function of crop development or weather conditions. There are several time criteria. The first one is when the root zone depletion reaches a specific threshold, which is given by the red line. So when the water content drops below that threshold, water will be applied. Now that threshold can be expressed in millimeters, when 50 millimeters of water has depleted out of the root zone, or you can express it also as a fraction of rho. Rho is zero at field capacity, there is no root zone depletion, and 100% when the threshold for stomatal closure is reached. Another time criteria can be a fixed interval, every 10 days, for example. That is useful in case of a rotational method of irrigation among irrigation groups. The fixed interval can change during the season and might become shorter when the weather becomes hotter and the crop is more developed. The last criteria is useful in the case of paddy rice irrigation. The criterion is irrigation will be applied when the water layer between the buns drops below a minimum value. Also here, that minimum water layer that needs to be maintained between the soil buns can vary during the growing cycle. It might be small at transplanting and then gradually increase throughout the season. There are two depth criteria. First of all, when a threshold is reached, triggering irrigation, return the water content in the root zone to field capacity. In aqua crop, we can even specify that an extra amount of water has to be added, for example, to leach salts out of the root zone, or even that you don't go exactly back to field capacity, but remain a certain amount below field capacity, for example, 10 millimeters, to take into account rain in the next day. The other depth criteria is a fixed application dose. That dose is selected in function of local practices, soil and crop parameters, and the irrigation method. When specifying a fixed application dose, only the net depth has to be specified. Don't add extra water that has to be applied to the field to account for conveying losses or runoff losses from the field. Indicative values for irrigation interval and application depth can be obtained with the help of this graph by considering the weather conditions and the crop canopy cover and the rooting depth and the soil physical characteristic. For example, if we have a rooting depth of 80 cm and a soil with a tow of 120 mm per meter, then the maximum application depth is 48 millimeters. Applying more water is likely to result in deeper collation losses. If the reference evapotranspiration is 6.5 mm and the canopy cover 90%, then you get a crop transpiration of about 7.5 millimeters. For that crop transpiration and that application depth, the irrigation interval is about six days and a half. 
for a ED node of 5 mm per day, the corresponding irrigation interval will be something as 8-9 days. The 48 mm is the maximum application depth for that salt type and rooting depth. However, the application depth needs to be adjusted to the irrigation method as well. If we only apply 30 mm for a particular irrigation method, then the irrigation intervals becomes 4 and 5 days respectively. In this slide you find indicative irrigation application depths for various irrigation methods, for surface irrigation, for sprinkler and for localized irrigation methods. Finally, in this slide, you find indicative values for tau for the different soil texture classes. So in our example, we took a soil with a tau of 120 mm per meter, which is a good indicative values for soil types such as sandy loam, sandy clay loam and sandy clay. To illustrate the generation of an irrigation schedule, I'm going to run an example for Foggia where tomatoes are cultivated. They were planted on the 1st of April on a loamy soil. To generate an irrigation schedule, I click here on the irrigation button and then here on the update irrigation management. The mode I'm going to select is the generation of an irrigation schedule. Let's assume that in this example the irrigation method is surface irrigation and more precisely furrow irrigation. In this screen I specify the time and the depth criteria. In the area with furrow irrigation farmers typically apply a depth of 30 millimeters. So I select a fixed application depth of 30 millimeters. I will irrigate when the allowable depletion drops to a particular value. Which value to select? Aquacrop can help me by clicking here on the threshold button. Aquacrop displays for the various threshold for leaf expansion growth, stomatal closure and senescence the corresponding row. To avoid leaf expansion growth, the root zone depletion cannot drop lower than 30%. I'm going to select 40%, which is close to that threshold. This table specifies that starting from day one, irrigation will be generated if the depletion in the root zone reaches 40% and at that moment 30 mm of water will be applied. So let's go to the run menu and run the simulation. We get high yields and the water content drops between field capacity and 40% row. However, there is no need to irrigate at the end of the season. So let's switch off the irrigation after August 15. Therefore, I go back to my main menu and update my irrigation schedule. So after day 137, which corresponds with 15th of August, I have a new rule. And the rule states that I should no longer irrigate. I can specify that in two ways. First of all, by specifying a very high root zone depletion of 500% row, which of course never can be reached. And then even by specifying if that threshold is reached, the amount of water which I apply is zero millimeters. So this rule stops the irrigation after day 137. I run it again and now indeed I can see that uh, I get the same yield of 10 tons by applying 600 millimeters which corresponds with 20 irrigation events 
and I get a relatively high ET water productivity of 1.46. Before looking at alternative irrigation strategies, let's write down the results. Irrigation is triggered when 40% of raw is depleted in the root zone. At that moment, we will apply 30 millimeters of water. At the end of the season, starting from 15th of August, irrigation is switched off. We require 600 millimeters of water, which consists of 20 events of 30 millimeters. The yield is high, 10 tons per hectare, and the ET water productivity is 1.46. Now, in the case of water scarcity, I need to apply less water. And here, Aquacrop can help me in finding some guidelines for farmers. First thing what I can do is to lower the root zone depletion to, for example, 100%. I return to my main menu. I go back to my irrigation schedule and I specify that starting from day one, irrigations are only triggered when the root zone depletion reaches 100% row. When I run this example, I can see that my yield drops slightly, that I have some canopy stress throughout the season, but that my irrigation applications drops to 450 millimeters, which corresponds with 15 events. My ET water productivity increased to 1.56. In the first alternative irrigation strategy, we allow the root zone to deplete to 100% row before 30 millimeters is supplied. As such, we can save 25% of the irrigation water. The yield drops slightly by 2%, but the ET water productivity increases to 1.56. By trial and error, I can try to further update this irrigation schedule. When practice might be that after flowering, which is starting from July, I'm going to lower my root zone depletion from 100 to, for example, 130%. I return to my irrigation schedule, and now I have a new rule which says that starting from the 1st of July, which is day 92, my allowable root zone depletion becomes 130%. When that threshold is reached, I still apply 30 millimeters of water. Let's try it again. Now I can see that next to water stress affecting canopy expansion, I have also water stress affecting stomatal closure. The yields drops further to 9.4 tons, but the amount of water which I apply drops also by one irrigation event to 420 millimeters. And the ET water productivity remains almost the same. In the second alternative irrigation strategy, we further increase the allowable depletion of the root zone after flowering from 100 to 130%. This saves 30% of the water with reference to the full irrigation and we can save six events. The yield drops by 5% and the ET water productivity remains high. I can still try to gain more water by switching off the irrigation in August during the ripening stage. I return to my irrigation menu. So instead of switching off my irrigation on day 137, I can do that on day 123, which corresponds with the 1st of August. 
I return to my main menu and run it again. My yield drops now to 9 tons. The amount of water which I apply is only 360 millimeters, which corresponds with 12 irrigation events and the ET water productivity is still high 1.54. In the last alternative strategy, we switch off the irrigation at the end of the season, starting from the 1st of August. As a consequence, we save 40% of the water with reference to the full irrigation and we only have 12 events applying 30 millimeters of water. The yields drops now by 10%, but the ET water productivity remain high. This last strategy is a typical example of deficit irrigation, in which we save a lot of water, in this case 40%, which result of course in a decline of the productivity but that decline is only 10% and small with reference to the saved water. If there is sufficient land available for irrigation, we can also express deficit irrigation in another way. For each 6000 cubic meters of water available for irrigation, with full irrigation we can irrigate one hectare and the yield will be then 10 tons. For deficit irrigation, we can irrigate 1.67 hectares and on each of those hectares we have 9 tons, so in total we get 15 tons. So with the same amount of water, we can increase the yield with 50%. Let me further discuss the concept of deficit irrigation. Under rain-fed condition, without any irrigation, yield might be rather low. For example, 2 tons per hectare. If on top of the rainfall I apply irrigation water, the yield might be high, for example 5 tons. Now deficit irrigation consists in not fulfilling completely the net irrigation requirement. So there are periods of stresses where irrigation is not applied. Although in very sensitive periods we go for full irrigation. But as a consequence of that water stress we will have a smaller crop which transpire less and which produce less, let's say 4 tons per hectare. Here we see an example for wheat production in Syria. The grain yield under rain-fed condition was rather low, less than 2 tons per hectare. If you drill a well and let farmers irrigate, it was noticed that they consumed on top of the rainfall nearly 3000 cubic meter per hectare and got a nice yield of more than 4 tons per hectare. By providing the farmers proper guidelines for irrigation, they can even get a higher yield of 4.5 tons per hectare with less water, 2,220 cubic meter water per hectare. Less nutrients will be leached out of the root zone. Experiments show it that with half of the water, with only 1,110 cubic meter per hectare, farmers still can get a relatively high yield, which is lower than for full irrigation, but still gives a high yield. If you plot the ET water productivity, you can see that it increases to close to 2 kilograms per cubic meter of water for deficit irrigation. So with half of the irrigation water I can nearly get the same grain yield.